Greetings, uh, beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we just want to take a moment and thank Bishop Tim Kulu and the leadership of men on track for affording us this great opportunity to be on this platform to share the word with men all over the country. We are so grateful that God is doing a new thing in this nation after the lockdown because we believe this is a new season and God is doing a new thing. And we want to address this uh, subject that is the theme of the conference, Restoring the Man. God is restoring things that have been taken away from us as men. There was a mandate given to mankind in the Garden of Eden and when God created man. And I want us to go back and look at the account of creation in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. And I have uh, this verse that caught my attention which is verse 11, and I want to read. It reads, Then God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came from. Now, I want us to really look at this passage. There are two words that um, caught my attention which is seed-bearing plant and seed-bearing fruit. Seed-bearing plant and seed-bearing fruit. That God, in his wisdom, in finite ability, decided that when he created the plants, he made them to bear seed. And when he created trees, he made them to have fruit that are bearing seed in them. And that has been God's way of doing what we can call a mode of operation that when it came to create mankind god used this a similar way to say i am creating man in my own image in my likeness and my intention with men is that they need to populate the earth but i am not going to create men everywhere put them in different continents of the world different countries but i'm going to create only two and the two will have to do the rest and i have wired them in a way that they will be able to fulfill that mandate given to them so when what we see today with the seedless uh, fruits it is never god's plan and it's not something that god created in the beginning that is man's doing but God created every fruit with the seed in them. And then the, the, this passage, it actually says, those seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came from. So I am here to say to you, we come from God and we are created in his image, in his likeness. And we are going to be reprodu reproductive and we are going to rule over creation. Remember Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make men in our image, in our likeness. And he said, let them have total dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. So we have that ability uh, to dominate creation. Creation has no power over us, but we have power over creation in the name of Jesus. Now, I want us to look at the word restoration because this word it actually talks about things that has been in existence and something that needs to be reinstated so that we can fulfill the mandate given to us. In, in, in verse 28, um, it reads, And God blessed them, and he said, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the beds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the ground. Now, when you look at this, there are actually four words that I want us to really interrogate as, as we deal with this. When you look at the first thing there, it says, and God bless them. God bless them. The word bless there means God authorized them he gave them permission number one he said to them be you know this is the first thing that god is saying or is is uttering 
after he has created mankind. Um, verse 26 was a concept. It was God's idea to say, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. But in verse 28, then God is speaking direct to mankind and he say, be. What is it that man needs to be? Now he says the first thing, be fruitful. Now the word fruitful um, in this passage, the word fruitful in this passage means to be productive, to be fertile, to be rich, prolific, abundant, successful, uh, and profitable. So God wants you and I, child of God, uh, to be productive. We are designed, we have the inherent nature, we are wired, child of God, to be productive. We are wired to be fertile. We are wired to be rewarding in our lives. And I'm saying to all the men in South Africa that don't allow the enemy to lie to you. You might have gone through trauma in your life, but I want you to remember that you are made in the image of God. You resemble God. You are God's shadow. What God moves in heaven, you are moving and you are moving in the direction that God is taking in the name of Jesus. And then the second thing that God is saying in this passage is saying multiply. The word multiply means to grow, develop, reproduce, and to proliferate. Now, when you look at this word um, multiply, it's a compound word. It's made out of two words, which is multi and ply. The word multi means many, and then the word ply means unlimited supply. If you come to my house and I serve you dinner and I keep on bringing more food on your plate, more drinks in your cup, more food on your plate, in plate it means I am plying you. And this word ply also means layers, okay? Like you buy a toilet paper, you've got a single ply, you've got double ply, meaning that it is layers. If you see wood, you buy a sheet of wood, the single ply, double ply, and triple ply, and so on. Now, when we talk about plying or layers, when you put the first layer, then the other layers that are coming, they are going to make sure that they are of the same quality, same size. And I am saying to you, when God created man, he made man so that when the other layers of men come, they are going to be of the same quality, same standard. It's not, there's not going to be difference between the first ply and the last ply. In generations to come, God wanted to bring in people who have the ability like Adam, who could name all the animals uh, without God second guessing him. Men like Adam, who would recognize a woman he has never seen and feel in his heart and say, this is a bone of my bone and this is a flesh of my flesh. And he names her and say, she shall be called a woman. Adam named all the animals. And when Eve came into the scene, Adam, a man of God, he was able to name Eve and say, this is a bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And may God stir up this God given thing in you that you will know how to name your family you will know how to name your wife and your children because what you name you are responsible for so when you name your wife when you name your children you will know that they are your responsibility as a man and then the third word that we find there it is the word replenish the word replenish means to stock up to refill to top off or to top up and to reload. And when you look at this word, um, brothers, it is, it is a, a, a word that is uh, loaded, that God wants us to replenish the earth. He knew that there's an enemy that was thrown down on earth before Adam and Eve were created. And the enemy was all out to come and disrupt God's plan. And it's important that every time he brings a disruption, on God's plan, God said, I have people made in my image that can, they can stock up after them, uh, themselves. They can refill the earth with people after themselves. They can top up and reload the earth 
with people after themselves. Listen to me. When you look at what has been given to us, we have the power to change the world. We have the power to influence. The Bible says we are the light and the salt of the earth. And we are going to show the world that we serve a living God. For greater is he that lives in us than the one that he lives in the world. And the fourth word in this verse is the word subdue. And the word subdue means um, to restrain, means to suppress, uh, means to hold back, to take control, uh, to check, to discipline, and also to tame. Now, I want you, child of God, to, to look at this passage and, and think about when we restrain. You're not only restraining something that it's not coming against you. You, you. you restrain things also to give them direction. And I'm here to say we need to discipline. We need to tame. If a farmer has a lot of cattle, a lot of donkeys and horses, but they are not tamed, then there are useless resources because he can have a field to plow, but if his, his cattle are not um, tamed, then they, they will not be of service to him. If his donkeys and horses are not tamed, then he won't be able to use them. He might be in need of transportation, but without taming them, they are not resources that are pliable in his hands. And I am saying to you, child of God, God wants you and I to take back what the enemy has stolen and then we get restored. And when we go out there, we need to get men and say to them, God wants you to be restored to your original position, the, or the position of dominion. Not dominating other human beings, but to dominate creation. And let me say to you, if you are able to dominate creation, you are going to be number one in the world. You are going to be the head, not the tail. You are going to be above, not beneath, because you have the ability to deal with things. And I want to say this to, to men, Christian men, that we can be complaining and, and, and feeling sorry for ourselves, discussing politics, pointing fingers at people who, who are in positions of authority and power. But remember, uh, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2, God allowed the river that was flowing out of Eden to water the garden. It was flowing out of a place called Eden. And then it was going into the river. It was not originating, originating from the garden, but it was from Eden, which was the place. And Eden, the garden was planted east of Eden. So the river was flowing from Eden into the garden and it waters the garden and then from the garden it splits into four head rivers and then it goes to different regions where the bible explains that there was gold and the gold of that land was pure and oxen and aromid raisins and all precious stones but i am here to say to you child of god the river splitted in the garden and then it, it, it started to flow into different places where there were resources. And I'm saying, we know that the, the resources of these nations, they belong to the people of these nations. They don't belong to um, few individuals, but they belong to the people of this nation. And us as men of God, we, we need to know that we have also a responsibility to get into positions that we can manage the resources and distribute them in a way that we are not going to discriminate um, against people who don't belong to our sect and our political affiliations. Okay, so I think God needs to restore the order of things in the lives of men, men of God. And that is my prayer, that in this season we are going to see God do a turnaround, that we are able to do things exceedingly abundantly above what we could imagine. And may this season start now in your family, in your church, in the name of Jesus. Uh, the church has been struggling to have resources because we looked at the issue of resources and say we are not involved. But God wants us to have the resources in our hands that we can take care of the need. We can take care of the orphans and the widows because those are in the heart of God. Now, men, 
we are called to pray for our families. If there's something that is not going well in our families, we are the ones to take authority over whatever is not going right in our families. God has made us to be fruitful. He has called us to multiply. He has called us to replenish the earth and also to subdue it. You need to subdue things in your life, child of God. You need to subdue things in your life because you've got authority. Jesus restored that authority. He said, I have been given authority on earth and even in heaven. And he says, therefore, go make disciples of all nations. Now, there's a story that is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 21. It is the story of Isaac. The Bible says his wife was barren. And I want us to read this in the Amplified, in the, in the, in the amplified Version. Um, it reads, Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was unable to conceive children. And the Lord granted his prayer. Rebecca, his wife, conceived twins. Now, this man, when he saw that there was a challenge in his family, his wife could not conceive. He did not fold his hands and say, I've got nothing, I can't do anything with this situation. The Bible says Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife. And I pray that in this season, men are going to pray for their wives. Men are going to pray for their children. Men are going to pray for their communities. Men are going to pray for their churches and their pastors. Because when men lift up their holy hands, things are bound to change. And the Bible says, Rebecca conceived. And she did not only conceive, she conceived twins because their husband prayed for her. And I am here to say to you, child of God, God wants to do a new thing in your life. And, and there's a story that also is in the book of Judges when you read chapter 12, chapter 13. The nation of Israel was under oppression. They were oppressed by the Philistines for over 40 years. They were impoverished by the Philistines because they were raiding, taking their fields, taking their crops, destroying everything. And they prayed and they cried to God and God wanted to send them a deliverer. And God found a, a woman and the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, you will conceive and have a child. And this child will be a Nazarite and a judge will, that will deliver the children of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And when the woman went home to go tell the husband what she saw and what she heard, I love this man. This man did not want just to say, I want to take this thing from face value. But this man made a prayer that I believe that most of us men, we need to make. Then the name of this man is Manoah. Then Manoah pleaded with the Lord and said, Oh Lord, please let the man of God whom you send come again to us and teach us what we are to do for the boy who is to be born. Now, this is a desire of my heart that in this new season, a season we have never been, a new dispensation, God, may you teach us um, how to handle this new dispensation. Listen, you can't put a new wine in an old wine skin. There's a new season, but old ideas will not fit in this new season. Most men have been laid off because of COVID-19. But my prayer is that God will give you the ability, you know, to be innovative and you are going to be creative. When we look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the book of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, I want you to look at those gifts with a different eye in this season. That those gifts are not just gifts to come and only edify the church, but those gifts are gifts that God has given to us, that we can show the world that we have a God in us. When we talk about the gift of wisdom, it is the gift that you need, that you can go out there in the marketplace, and you can be seven times wiser than the people who don't know God. You can be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, and, 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 and be ahead of your peers and you will be able to anticipate the next bounce of the ball. Not only that, when you have the gift of knowledge, you, you have a gift of information. When you're sitting in the boardroom and everyone else doesn't know because this is a complex issue, 
God will give you knowledge. Something that you read many years ago and God will just make it to pop out of your spirit and give you a terminology, give you the ability to do. When we talk about gift of miracles, it's a gift that we all need in this season that when you are stuck, the gift of miracle is a gift that unstuck people. It's a gift that gives you a push. It's a gift that accelerates you. It's a gift that gives you wings to fly. And I pray that in this season, man, you will know how to get these things operating in your life. You know, when we talk about the gift of tongues, you know, I was reading the Bible and I'm thinking about the gift of tongues that the, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 that they were speaking in languages that people could understand. The Jewish people who were coming from diaspora, they could hear them speak in their languages. And they knew that these guys are Galileans. They have never been outside that region. But they were speaking their languages clearly and, and um, articulated, uh, um, uh, articulated very well. And I'm saying to you, God will give you a language that when you sit in the boardroom, when you sit with the wise people, you will be able to speak a business language. You will be able to, uh, to speak medical language. You will be able to speak engineering language without you not being an engineer because the Spirit of God is upon you. We've got to elevate our faith to a level where we know God is restoring the things that has been taken away from us. And I don't want us to be average men because average people achieve um, average results. But we want to be extraordinary men in this season. We want to do great exploits for the kingdom of God. The devil is a liar. God has already opened doors and those doors no man can shut them in Jesus' name. And I pray that uh, we are going to be like Monoa. And we are going to cry to the Lord and say, yes, I, my wife had the information, but was not enough. And you pray to God and say, may you, may you come again. May you send your angel again that he can tell us more what to do with this boy. Because when Samson was born, he was coming to deliver people who have been enslaved for 40 years by the enemy. It was a great thing. It was a great anticipation. I know people are oppressed by the enemy. They are oppressed by the spirit of alcoholism. Men are oppressed by the spirit of competition. They are oppressed by many things, depression. And I pray that in this season, God will give us ideas as men on track that we can know how to help men and how to win men, how to groom men to be godly men. And in this season, I pray that the Holy Spirit will start to move in a powerful way in the hearts of men and that men are going to rise up and make a difference. This nation needs men who will be sitting in, the, in parliament in the corridors of power, godly men who will take over the resources of this nation and distribute them equally so into the residents and the citizens of this country in jesus name i pray well thank you very much this is what i had in my heart to share with you in this session and i pray that god will restore us and he will restore that uh, divine mandate that was given to us in the beginning listen uh, god is not coming back to create man again whatever he wants to do is already in you when noah was going into the boat god wanted to preserve his creation and in all other animals went in in with noah so god was not going to create from that time he created adam and eve he, he finished creation and whatever things that he wants to do he will use creativity from mankind that mankind will take uh, what god has created and then they will recreate and use their innovation to come up with uh, new ideas, new things, your, your smart devices, your microphones, your computers, your lights, all these things. They will use the raw materials and to use creativity that is in them because they are made in the image of God so that they can achieve great things. I pray that God will bless you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Amen.